Hello everyone, uh, Dr. Mungli here. Today I am going to explain you on hyperoxaluria. Uh, in particularly, I will be explaining you primary hyperoxaluria. Hyperoxaluria basically it means excess levels of oxalates that are found in the urine and this is generally because of consumption of dietary sources which are rich in oxalates. Generally the green leafy vegetables are rich in oxalates and also the green tea, excess consumption of green tea is known to cause excess oxalate excretion in the urine giving rise to hyperoxaluria. So in today's uh, video I am primarily explaining primary hyperoxaluria. Primary hyperoxaluria it differ from just hyperoxaluria so hyperoxaluria is generally because of second it is secondary to consumption of excess oxalate containing uh, food source whereas primary hyperoxaluria is because of inherited condition it is because of autosomal recessive inheritance of or defect in a gene that is coding for some of the enzymes which are involved in metabolism of glycine so note that Primary hyperoxaluria is because of defect in a metabolic enzyme involved in glycine catabolism. So glycine undergoes deamination process by an enzyme called glycine oxidase enzyme. So the glycine here, so I am starting from, uh, from the right lower corner here, glycine, amino acid glycine is oxidized means there will be deoxidative to deamination of glycine into glyoxalate this will be done by glycine oxidase enzyme so there will be ammonium ion released glyoxalate is converted to glycolate and this will be done by enzyme called glycolate reductase enzyme all these reactions will be going on in the cytoplasm. So glyoxalate is converted to glycolate by glycolate reductase enzyme and pre previous to that glycine is converted to glyoxalate by glycine oxidase. These reactions will be going on in the cytoplasm. Once glycolate is synthesized, so glycolate will be transported into peroxisome. So further catabolism of glycolate will be going on in the peroxisome. So the glycolate is reduced back into glyoxalate there by glyocolate, glycolate, glycolate oxidase enzyme and glyoxalate now it will undergo transamination reaction where the amino group donor is alanin. So generally amino group donors in transamination reactions are glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate. Now alanin is acting as a trans, um, amino group donor here. So the glyoxalate will be converted to glycine in this reaction and alanine it will be converted to pyruvate and this reaction it will be catalyzed by enzyme called alanine glyoxalate transaminase which is also called as glycine transaminase. As with any other transaminases so this transaminase also needs vitamin B6 in the form of pyridoxal phosphate. So this is one of the important reaction that we need to understand here to understand primary hyperoxaluria. So it's because in primary hyperoxaluria there will be a defect or deficiency in alanine glyoxalate transaminase which is sometimes written as AGT that is alanine glyoxalate transaminase which is simply referred as glycine transaminase. So if there is a defect in alanine glyoxalate transaminase or glycine transaminase that will decrease conversion of glyoxalate into glycine. So that will lead to elevation of glyoxalate in the peroxisome and now the glyoxalate it will leak out into the cytoplasm. So whenever glyoxalate is elevated it will be leaked out into cytoplasm from peroxisome and the cytoplasmic glyoxalate level increases. Now glyoxalate it will be diverted into oxalate formation this will be done by lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. Now that's one of the major fate of glyoxalate in the cytoplasm 
Another fate of glyoxalate in the cytoplasm is glyoxalate can be converted to glycolate but as we have just now seen glycolate moves into peroxisome and then in the peroxisome it is converted to glyoxalate but glyoxalate cannot be converted into glycine because there is a deficiency of glycine transaminase. Again glyoxalate it will come back into the cytoplasm. Levels of glyoxalate in the cytoplasm is increased and that will go towards oxalate formation. So the oxalate now it will be excreted by our renal tubular cells into urine. So oxalate levels in the urine increases and this is when oxalate it will combine with calcium molecule in the urine giving rise to calcium oxalate stones or calcium oxalate crystals or precipitates. So this calcium oxalate precipitation can give rise to formation of stones in the urinary system which will we call it as urolithiasis. So stone formation can be seen in the renal uh, tubular cells or renal tissue called nephrolithiasis or ox calcium oxalate stones can be seen in the urinary bladder. So because of the stone formation so this will slowly decrease the glomerular filtration rate and ultimately patient will progress into renal failure. So this is one of the complication with calcium oxalate stone formation which is seen in primary hyperoxaluria. And there are three types of primary hyperoxaluria type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1 primary hyperoxaluria is the most common one and that is because of defect or deficiency in alanine glyoxalate transaminase which is also called as glycine transaminase. So in glycine transaminase deficiency or calcium oxalate increases that will give rise to urolithiasis, nephrolithiasis, stones in the uh, urinary bladder, uh, decrease in the glomerular filtration rate ultimately leading to renal failure. So during this time what happens oxalate levels will be accumulated in the blood and that can now be appearing in the joint spaces it will appear in the bone marrow and if other tissues at this condition we call that as oxalosis oxalosis is basically it is the excess levels of oxalates in the blood and in the in other tissues basically other tissues are also involved here other uh, along with the nephrolithiasis urolithiasis and giving rise to renal failure so this is all about primary hyperoxaluria especially primary hyperoxaluria type 1 i hope you understood the this important concept here about glycine metabol catabolism into glyoxalate by glycine oxidase and the glyoxalate moving into peroxisome for further uh, detoxification process done by glycine transaminase which needs vitamin B6 but if there is a defect in glycine transaminase glyoxalate comes out into the cytoplasm and it will be diverted into oxalate formation so leading to calcium oxalate stones and ultimately giving rise to renal failure thanks for watching if you like the video give thumbs up and for further updates and regular uh, notifications on new videos you can considering subscribing to my channel see you again in my other videos take care